Hello and welcome to this undergraduate skills video where we are going to learn about various basic laboratory calculations which will be extremely useful as you progress through your degree. Now why do you need to know these calculations? Well it will allow you to analyse scientific data and once it has been analysed you can then start to understand it and once you understand it you can start to draw conclusions on what the data shows. So without further ado, in this particular video, we are going to focus on calculating the arithmetic mean. So what exactly is the arithmetic mean, or to use its more common name, the mean? Well, it is a statistical value that we use to help describe a specific aspect of a data set. And in this instance, the mean value relates to the average value of a defined data set. And it is one of the most common ways in which we can measure the midpoint of a number of data values that is, when they are normally distributed. So what do we mean by this? Well, put very simply, data that is normally distributed will be symmetrical around the mean, and when visualised on a graph, it takes the form of what we call a bell-shaped curve. Now, what this means is that data values closer to the mean will occur more frequently than data values which deviate further from the mean. Now, a key question is how do we calculate the mean? Well, using the following equation, we have the sum of our data values divided by the number of data values observed. Now, some people might ask, how many data values do I need to calculate the mean, or what is the bare minimum? On a technical level, you need two data values in order to get a mean value between the two. However, this is considered bad practice in science, and so you will typically hear three or even five data values being considered the bare minimum. That being said, the more data values you record, the more accurate your analysis will be. Now to help make sense of this equation, we are going to calculate the mean value of two example datasets. In our first example, we have a student who is counting the number of monocytes in a patient's blood sample using a microscope and hemocytometer. During their first count, they note 235 monocytes per microliter of blood. To try and increase the accuracy of their data though, they perform repeat counts on different blood samples from the same patient, noting 204, 214, 256 and 251 monocytes per microliter. Following this experiment, the student wants to know what is the mean number of monocytes per microliter for this patient. So in order to do this, we need to transfer all of the information from the example into our equation. So the sum of x becomes our five data values added together and n becomes the number five as this is the number of data values the student observed. Now to make things easier, we can simplify this equation by completing the top line of the equation and adding our values together, giving us 1160, which can now be divided by the number of observations, which is five, to give us a mean value of 232 monocytes per microliter. And that's it, 232 is the average of our five data values. Now, let's have a look at a second example. Here we have a second student who is repeating the same experiment but with a different patient's blood sample. This student was a bit slower in the lab and only managed to complete four cell counts, identifying 180, 217, 250 and 281 monocytes per microliter. Following this experimental counting, the student wants to know what is the mean number of monocytes per microliter for this patient. And just like our first example, we start with our equation to determine the mean value of a data set, which is then substituted with data from the experiments. Notice how in our example, our x value on the top of the equation has only four data points which means the n value on the bottom of the equation is equal to 4 and not 5 as we saw previously. Now to make things easier, we can simplify this equation by completing the top line of the equation and adding our values together, giving us 928, which can now be divided by the number of observations, which is 4, to give us a mean value of 232 monocytes per microliter. And that's it. 232 is the average of our four data values. Now, 
You might notice something here. The mean value of monocytes counted by student 2 in our second example is exactly the same as the mean value of monocytes counted by student 1 in our first example. However, the data used to generate these values is quite different. If we look at the cell counts for student 2, we had 180, 217, 250 and 281, four numbers which deviate from the mean value by quite a bit. And if we compare this to the cell counts of student 1, we had 204, 214, 235, 251 and 256, all of which are relatively close to the mean. Now, if we were to just use the mean values to describe the work of these two students, you could come to the conclusion that they have identical data. And as we can see from these examples, it would be the wrong conclusion because the data used by each student is quite different. Therefore, when using the mean to describe experimental results, it should never be in isolation as it only tells part of a story. Further statistical tests are required to tell us about how spread out our data is around this mean value, and that is what the other videos in this series are about. And with that, we come to the end of this basic laboratory calculations video. Hopefully you found the content useful, easy to understand, and can use it going forward during your data analysis. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I hope you have a great day.